Amos chapter 9, verse 8. That's what we're getting into today at Jerusalem Tabernacle of David. Amos chapter 9, verse 8. The Sinful Kingdom. And just to point out that this book is pronounced Amus in Hebrew. Here, the prophet Amus is bringing forth a prophecy from yud heh vav -Heh. Last time we did verse 7, and I just want to make one more point that I didn't make last time. And that is, when Yehovah says in the middle of verse 7, O children of Israel, this does not mean that the kingdom of Israel is here separated from the kingdom of Judah, as if he's addressing only the northern kingdom and not the southern kingdom. This is both kingdoms joined together. Why? Because the very next phrase, did I not bring up Israel from the land of Egypt? When yod heh vav -Heh brought the children of Israel up from Egypt, there was no division in the kingdoms yet. There was no division. So this is united. This is this is all the people of Israel, including Judea and Samaria, and, uh, and including Israel. In Amuz chapter 3, verse 1, the judgment spoken by Amuz connects the children of Israel together with the whole family brought up from Egypt. So we see there in chapter 3, verses 1 to 2, hear this word that Yehovah has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. So, this entire prophecy recorded by Amuz is including together the ten northern tribes as well as the southern tribes. We also see in chapter 3 verse 2 that Yehovah's dealings are with families or tribes, not races. So we can go ahead and stop thinking that the concept of race is significant. It's not significant. We see in Genesis 10 verse 32, it's written about the families of the sons of Noah. So that's families. And they're also distinguished by tongues after uh, the Tower of Babel. And that's Genesis 10 verses 5, verses 20, and 31. We also see that Amos chapter 3 also contains the famous verse 3. Can two walk together except they be agreed? And verse 7, Surely Adonai Yahowah will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Back to Amos chapter 9 verse 8. Behold, the eyes of Adonai Yehovah are upon the sinful kingdom. So, the sinful kingdom. You know, we see that connects with 1 John chapter 3, verses 4 and 7, where it's written that sin is the transgression of instruction Torah. And also in Amuz chapter 2, verse 4, because they have despised Torah Yehovah, the instruction Torah of Yehovah, and have not kept Chukayo, his laws, his commandments, Yah will destroy it off the face of the earth. Amuz proclaimed this prophecy prior to the destruction of the first temple. There was the four exiles, and this prophecy of Amuz happened before all of them. Okay, before the exiles, there was a forerunner, which would be Egypt, the captivity, the slavery in Egypt. But that was before Israel became a nation. After Israel became a nation, first there was the Babylonian exile from 423 to 372 BCE, when Nebuchadnezzar destroyed the first temple and exiled 10,000 people, including Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. The second one was Persia and Media from 372 BCE until 348, and that's when King Darius I from Persia conquered Babylon. And then next came King Cyrus, and then Ahasuerus, and then his son with that he his son that he had with Queen Esther, Darius II. So that was the second. The third exile was Greece. When Greece occupied the land of Israel, that was from 371 to 140 BCE. And that was because Persia fell to Alex the Great, and they left Israel in place there. And then the fourth exile would be Rome. Yah will destroy it off the face of the earth, yet not utterly destroy the Beit Yaakov, house of Yaakov. 
So then we see that this connects with Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1. For Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob and will still choose Israel and settle them in their own land. The strangers will be joined with them and they will cling to the house of Jacob. Then people will take them and bring them to their place and the house of Israel will possess them for servants and maids in the land of Yahweh. They will take them captive, whose captives they were, and rule over their oppressors. So he's going to cause the downfall of the kingdom, but he's not going to utterly destroy the people. He's not going to destroy the house of Jacob. So that's verse 8 of Amuz chapter 9. So remember to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get our weekly videos. Many blessings. Thanks.